All right, in a previous video, what we did is we went ahead and solved for the reactions on this frame, right? So we found the moment and the, the axial force and the um, shear at A. We found the forces at pin C, and we also find the vertical force at, at point D here, right? And what we did is we had to go and draw a bunch of free body diagrams. We had to apply equations of equilibrium. And eventually we came and we solved for you know all these different forces. So what I did is I just kind of summarized that in the next step. To, to really start the process of drawing a shear and moment diagram. So let's scroll down here for a second. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like this, right? So what we know is we have two members. We have member BCD, right? Here's BCD, right? And what I did is I just copied the forces that we saw for in that previous video. And same with AC, right? I took this and just copied the forces from the previous video. So all that is, is now we have forces, we have reactions. And if you remember, when we do our shear and moment diagrams, we have to go ahead and, and set our local axes. So first, I'm going to take member AC, and I'm going to take the local axes from the bottom up. So my local x-axis is always lined up with a member, and that's going to go straight up. For BCD here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to start at the left, and I'm going to go all the way to the right. And it's a little bit different here because, you know, here we have point C, which is kind of in the middle of the member. But even still, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the left-hand side, have X, and go along the axis to the right. Okay, once we do that, drawing the shear moment diagrams, hopefully it's pretty straightforward, right? So for shear, what we know is, well, we're gonna start here with AX, and AX goes to the left five. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna start at zero, we're gonna come up to five, and that's where we go, right? So we start at zero, go up to five, and, and then we're just gonna come straight over to this point, and the five kilonewtons is gonna push us straight back down here. And that's our shear diagram, that's it, right? I'm gonna label this five kilonewtons, I'm going to label this side positive, this side negative, and then I'm going to just go ahead and shade this in. And that's our shear diagram. So let's go up here to BCD and solve for our shear diagram as well. So whenever we have a uniform load, we need to come down on our shear diagram the same you know, value per meter as the uniform load drops. So this, you know, if we write 400 newtons per meter, this is also like 0 0.4 kilonewtons per meter. So I want to keep consistent units. I'm going to do that. So if we start at zero at the end of the beam, right? We're gonna travel, well, this is a distance of four meters. So if we come over four meters, four times 0.4 is gonna be 1.6. So we know that we're gonna come down a total of 1.6 kilonewtons. So I'm gonna write this as minus 1.6. And we need to drop this down, and I'll draw the line in, to minus 1.6. Well, what happens at the support? We go up 3.92, so when we come up 3.92, that's gonna bring us all the way up to 2.32. So I'll label this over here, 2.32, and then we'll connect all the dots. And as we move to the right of this point, we're gonna still drop 0.4 kilonewtons per meter. And this length here, well, if the whole thing is 14, right, minus four, the rest of this length is gonna be 10. So 10 times 0.4, Right, 10 times 0.4, that's how much shear we're gonna drop from this point all the way down to here. So 10 times 0.4 is gonna be what? 10 times 0.4 is four, right? And so what happens is if we come 2.32 minus four, we're gonna end up over here at minus 1.68. So I'm just gonna label this minus 1.68 and connect the line. And once we have our values there, we can shade it in. So to find our moment diagrams, what we need to do is we need to recognize, well, one, what a positive and negative moment is. So let's draw in our positive sign convention. So here, on when we have our local axes, we know that a moment causes tension on the bottom, compression on the top, right? So this is gonna be positive moment over here. And similarly, we're gonna rotate this like this, so that tension on the bottom, compression on the top. We wanna draw those sign conventions so that we know which way we're doing our moment for, for sure, okay? So what we need to see here is well you know this is the this is one tricky part of this problem where do we start the moment at this diagram right we know that you know to the left is positive to the, to the right is negative but where do we start it well what we can see here is this moment this moment at a is causing tension in the top and compression in the bottom right it's pulling on the top and pushing on the bottom that's opposite of what we have here in our positive sign convention so what that means is this 25 kilonewtons is going to be a negative 25 so i'm going to come all the way down to here call this minus 25 and then from there what we're going to do is we're going to close it back to this point it's going to climb in an area of you know of of essentially five kilonewtons per meter this area we could also calculate it out area one is just going to be five kilonewtons times five meters 
which is going to equal 25 kilonewton meters. So if we start at minus 25, we're going to come straight back to zero. And you might be wondering, well, what happens next? Well, the height of the shear diagram is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. Well, there's no shear for the rest of this, this member, right? So if there's no shear for that member, the moment is just going to have a zero slope or not be changing. So when we look at this, what we can do is we can come back and say that is our moment diagram and shade it in. So next we come to member BCD, and here we have to find some more areas. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this A2, this A3, and this A4, just because we've already used A1 over here. All right. So if we're doing this now, what we want to do is we want to find some more moment points, and, and really what we want to do is we want to find these areas. So let's go ahead and find them. I'll just write those over here. So A2 equals what? Well, it's a triangle. So what do we have? We have one half times the base. This base is going to be four meters times the height of minus 1.6 kilonewtons and when we do that we're going to get a value of minus 3.2 kilonewton meters okay and then similarly we can go and find a3 and this is going to be a triangle it's going to be one half times uh oh well now we need to do something else and we need to say well what is this distance what's this distance x and what i like to do is i like to say well this distance is going to be the shear or the height of the shear here divided by the slope. In this slope, we know, we've already figured this out, is for every one meter, we're gonna drop 0.4 kilonewtons. Okay, so x is going to equal, essentially what we're gonna have here is the shear divided by w, right, where this is our w, our uniform load equals w, and what that works out to here is, we know this is gonna work out to our shear of 2.32 kilonewtons divided by 0.4 kilonewtons per meter, and our x value is going to be 5.8 meters. You know, it looks about right, right? If this is to scale in our, you know, 2, 4, 6, this is a little bit before the 6, so 5.8 makes sense. And if you draw these to scale, which I always recommend you do, it kind of gives you an indication of whether the numbers you come up with make sense or not. So we need to multiply this by 5.8 meters, and then we're going to multiply it by the height of the shear, right, which is 2.32 kilonewtons. And when we do that out, we get a value of 6.728 kilonewtons meters and let's go and find the last area while we're while we're at it area four well what's the remainder here well if this whole distance right this whole distance from you know point C to point D is 10 well we know that the remainder over here is gonna be 10 minus 5.8 or 4.2 meters okay so now we can go ahead and find our area of our last triangle and what's that 4.2 meters times our height here is minus 1.68 and you don't want to miss that uh, negative sign because it tells us kind of which way this the moment diagram is going to go so if we do that out we get minus 3.528 kilonewton meters all right in here this is kind of the cool part right what we want to do is we want to find our moment so we're going to find our moment at some various points i'm going to call this point zero i'm going to call this point one point two Point three, and we're gonna go ahead and find the moment at each of those points. So what we wanna do is we know that the moment is gonna start at zero, it's the end of a beam, there's no resistance to curvature, there's no applied moment, and we're gonna start at zero. So we can say, well, M zero equals zero. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty significant, but also not too crazy to, to understand. All right, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a negative, add a negative value in A2. So to get M1, this is gonna be M0, you know, plus A2, which is just gonna be minus 3.2 kilonewton meters. So we're gonna start at zero, but we're gonna end up going down to uh, minus 3.2. So if I come down here to, you know, minus 3.2 and draw this in, minus 3.2, I, I need to curve this down. We have a varying height shear. So we're gonna start at zero slope, height of the the height of the shear diagram is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. So we're going to start at zero slope and end up with a negative slope. So we start at zero slope, end up, end up with a negative slope, and we're going to have a curve that does something along those lines. Well, then what do we do next? Then we need to add to this minus 3.2. We're going to say M2 equals, well, we have M1 plus our next area, A3, which minus 3.2 plus 6.728 comes to 3.528 kilonewton meters. So we'll plot that point and we'll drop it straight down here. And this is gonna be, you know, 3.528, or we'll just round it to 3.53 kilonewton meters. And then our last value, hopefully you can see this and you know where it's going, but we're gonna take M2 plus A4. And when we do that, right, 3.528, 
minus 3.528 is just going to come back to zero kilonewton meters. So we're going to come back to zero, and now we have to connect the dots, right? So we're going to put a, a parabola in here that connects the dots. And there's our moment diagram. We've highlighted um, both the negative moment and the positive moment, and we can now shade this in and answer the question. Because the question asked us, what was the maximum moment and the maximum shear? And why do we want to know it? So that we can de design the beam correctly, right? So what we know is the, the Vmax or the maximum shear occurs you know, at this point where we have our five kilonewtons, right? Uh, we have minus 1.6, 2.32, but the maximum shear is going to be our uh, five kilonewtons. So Vmax is going to equal five kilonewtons, right? We can have an Mmax in the positive sense. We can have an Mmax in the negative sense. And again, that tells us where our maximum tension and compression is, right? So Mmax positive will be 3.53 kilonewton meters. And our Mmax negative is going to be minus 3.2 kilonewton meters. And sometimes you want to know the difference of those because it makes a difference with whether or not the beam is braced, right? In some instances, this, this beam might be braced by a floor or some other bracing or a bridge deck, right? And you want to know where positive and negative moment is because it, it impacts how the, the beam behaves, all right? So that's it. I mean, what we did is we went through, we set our local axes, we defined our internal sign convention. We went through and then we plotted these things where we highlighted, you know, the maximum shear, and we also ended up finding the maximum moment values. All right, so that's it, right? That's the solution that we were looking for. And I hope this helps, you know, it gives you another example of how to do a shear moment diagram, how to find the maximum shear moment for a frame, right? And um, again, if you just follow the same procedure, you should do well. So if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment. But otherwise, I hope this helps. Until next time, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.